God in me. Oh, I said the Lord is blessing me. Is blessing me right now. Right now. Come on, let's sing that again. Come on, say the Lord is blessing me. The Lord is blessing me. Right now. Oh, right now. I said the Lord. Is blessing me. Oh, right now. He woke me up. And he started me. Oh, it's blessing me. Right now. We're going to take that from the top again. Come on, everybody, open your mouth. The Lord. Is blessing me right now. Whoa! I said the Lord is blessing me. Oh, right now. Oh, right now. He woke me up. He woke me up this morning. He started me. Come on, y'all. We're going to take it to the verse. He woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. No, he didn't let me sleep. Let me sleep too late. Whoa. He woke me up. Whoa. He woke me up. And he started me. The Lord, the Lord is blessing me. We're going to sing that one more time. He woke me up this morning. I was clothed in my. Oh, he didn't let, let me sleep too late. He woke, he woke, he woke. He woke me, woke me right on time. Oh. Right now. Right now. Now come on everybody. Oh, right the, Lord the Lord is blessing me. He's blessing me. Right now. Right now. Oh. oh right now. I said the Lord. I said the Lord is blessing me. He's blessing me. Oh right now. Take it to the special, y'all. Right y'all ready, tennis? Come on. The Lord is blessing me right now. 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 The Lord is blessing anybody today. Put your hands together. The Lord is blessing me right now. 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 Come on, y'all. The Lord is blessing me. The Lord is blessing me right now. 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 The Lord is blessing me. Right now, the Lord. Now come on. He woke me up this morning. The Lord is blessing me right now. He woke me up this morning. And he started me. And started me on my way. Come on. The Lord. The Lord is blessing me. Is blessing me. Come on, the Lord. The Lord is blessing me. Is blessing me. Say it again, the Lord. The Lord is blessing me. Is blessing me. Right now. Right now, all right now, all right now. Hey. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord.
Lord is blessing me right now. It's good to be in collaborative worship, but it's also important for you to have a personal relationship with our God. The Lord is blessing me right now. Thank you, God. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us. Scripture tells us that in eternity past, before we were ever created, that God, you already loved us. You had sacrificed your son for us on the altar. You had made way for us to be redeemed and close to you again. God, thank you for blessing us. Lord, in spite of our misdoings, our mistreatments, our lies, our deceitfulness, our poor choices, dear God, sometimes even our evil ways, you love us. God, thank you. God, we thank you for this worship service and we invite the Holy Spirit to dwell among us. Matter of fact, thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in the midst right now. I pray for those who came with heavy hearts and, and bowed down heads, dear God, feeling sorry for themselves or feeling that there was no way out. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, remind them that there is nothing too hard for you. That wherever they are, you are there as well. The psalmist says, even if I make my bed in hell, the devil will, that the Lord will be with me. So God, wherever we are, you're with us, even if it feels like we're in the midst of a hellish situation. You promise to walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death, so we will fear no evil. God, we ask right now that you Send a special blessing upon all of our members of God, wherever they may be. We pray not just for us, but for all of those who are suffering across the country. Those who are victims of mass shootings again. Those who are in countries that are warring again. Those who are in wayward homes or in dysfunctional families again. It seems we can't turn left or right without seeing evil rearing its head again. But God, you declare that we are victorious, that you've overcome the world and we can do the same. So God, give us that strength. Give us the power, dear God, to do what is what you have given us to do to fight against the evil that's in this world. Lord, above all, I pray you turn our eyes back to you. Help us to focus in on you. If you did it before, you can do it again. Lord, have your way in this place. Don't let us leave the way we came. Whatever burdens we're carrying, dear God, lift them. Whatever worries we have, dear God, we cast them. Whatever issues are in our bodies, Lord, heal them. Whatever financial need we have, dear God, meet them. Lord, you are so careful to give your name. The glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask all things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
up this morning. Lord, we pray. Somebody make it. Judges, the seventh chapter, reading verses two through nine, the New King James Version. Judges 7 chapter 2 to the ninth verses, and it reads, And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hands have saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps, water for, who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who left, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. So the people took provisions and their trumpets in their hands, and he sent away all the rest of Israel every man to his tent and retained those 300 men. Now the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. It happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hands. The word of God for the people of God. And thanks be unto God. Lord, I'm running, Lord, I'm running, trying to make 100 because 99 and a half, and a half. Lord, I'm running, Lord, I'm running, trying to make, trying to make 100 because 99. Lord, please hear me when I pray. Please forgive me when I stumble. Lord, I want to be in that number. Lord, I'm running. Lord, I'm running. Trying to make. 
mistakes Try to make 100 Because 99 In a half Lord, I'm running Lord, I'm running Trying to make Trying to make 100 99 Let's sing that again, y'all Lord, I'm running Lord, I'm running Lord, I'm running Trying to make Trying to make 100 99 99 It won't do Lord, I'm running. Lord, I'm running. Trying to save 100 because 99 in a half. On oh, my knees yeah. every day. Lord, please hear me when I pray. Please forgive me when I stumble. Lord, I want to be in that number. Won't do. Lord, I'm running. I'm trying to make a hundred. I'm gonna say the verse one more time. On my knees every day. Lord, please hear me when I pray. Lord, forgive me when I stumble. Lord, I wanna be in that number. Open your mouth, everybody. Lord, I'm running. I'm trying to make a hundred. Because 99 and a half won't do. Lord, I'm running. To pray. The time has come for all to pray. It may seem routine that we do this every Sunday, but the truth of it is, man should always pray. We should have an attitude, a mindset that we're always praying. Now's your time. Brother Sephora wants to lift up his niece, who recently lost her husband. If there are others, please come. to do. And if you're bold enough, say it out loud. agree with you. We're going to have a selection from the praise team. 
And then the next voice you hear will be the woman of God, Reverend Lachey Sanchez Cabrera. I asked her if she had anything in mind that she wanted to hear. She said, no. But she's talking about Gideon. She's going to bring a word about Gideon. And anybody who knows the story, you know that he was afraid. He was scared. So to have, to go from 30,000 to 300, 22,000 to 300, had to be very frightening. And even though this is a newer hymn and probably wasn't even around when Gideon came around, was alive, I'm sure there was some version of it that he had to have on his home. I need the old, I need the Pastor Price in his absence, to my beloved sister, Reverend Soxon, who always says, I got you, I got you, I got you. It's good to have those who will stand with you, amen, um, when you're doing what God has asked you to do. To everyone in their respective places, I am excited about this word because it's always something when it's a familiar story but then God kind of shows you something a little different within it. And so I'm excited about this word. It is a word that is for this date and this time in this space and place that we're in within the nation. And so I'm gonna go ahead and lift just one of those verses that Reverend Soxon read. She read Judges chapter seven, verses two through nine, and I want to read and lift just verse number nine although we'll be walking through the entire story. Verse number nine says, it happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. And for just a few moments, I want to preach to you from the subject, rise up. 
your climb to victory. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you now once again. God, I need you. God, I pray that you would speak a word into your people. God, I pray that you would deliver it in a manner, God, that it comes forth with clarity and understanding. I pray, God, that you would touch every person under the sound of my voice, both within the walls and in the virtual space. God, prepare their hearts, God, to hear the word and for it to take root within. God, I pray that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you alone are my strength and my redeemer. In your beloved son Jesus' name we pray and we say, Amen. For a few moments from the subject, rise up. A couple of years ago, there was a song by Andrew Day that dominated the airways. It was heard on radios and it was attached to commercials in which you saw frontline workers battling a pandemic that brought with it so many unknowns. Yet you saw paramedics and doctors and nurses suit up and prepare for the battle. They seemed outnumbered and, in Ill and ill equipped for the battle, yet they found themselves confronting the battle no matter the number of them that showed up to work each and every day. And some of you may be familiar with the song by Andrew Day that the lyrics say, I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, and I'll rise up. I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. And as I com contemplated and listened to the words of that particular song, I began to think about an uprising that needs to occur within the kingdom of God. And I began to ask myself some of the tough questions. When will we rise up against injustices? When will we be sick and tired of being sick and tired? When will the news of yet another school mass shooting strike us so to the core that we rise up and do something about it? I heard on the news just yesterday that some of the families of the children in the Uvalde shooting are considering having open casket funerals for their children because just like Mamie Till back in 1955, they want the world to see what was done to their children while they were sitting in their classrooms. When will we rise up so that our children can be safe while obtaining an education? When will we rise up when a mass shooting occurs in a grocery store based solely on its location in an African-American community disturb our peace so much that we rise up and do something about it? When will we rise up against leaders who don't have an art interest at heart and in 2022 are doing everything they can to suppress the black vote? When will we in the kingdom of God rise up? And as I began to read and study the, st the story of Gideon, a holy fire was lit within me. To give you a little bit of background to a very familiar story, Gideon finds it himself in the book of Judges. In the book of Judges, the people of Israel find themselves in a place where they find themselves time after time after time. They find themselves in a place where they've forgotten about God and who he is and in the previous chapter, in chapter six, it tells us that they began to do what was right in their own eyes. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Israel at the time, they were a nation that was not honoring God. They were a nation that had stopped moving forward. In Judges 6, chapter, one, chapter six, verse one, it says that Israel did what was evil in the sight of God and the Lord had handed them over into the hands of the Midianites. 
And as I look at the world around me and the occurrence that we are experiencing day in and day out, I can't help but wonder if in the land of the free and the home of the brave, if God has handed this nation over into the hands of the enemy. But I want you to know today that there is hope. Because even still, God raised up a group of people called the judges for whom this book is named. And these judges were people who were called and empowered by God to confront the enemies of God. Are there any judges in the house today? And so my quest for you today, my brothers and sisters, is to ask yourself this. Are you willing to be a part of a group who is called and empowered by God to stand and rise up against the schemes of the devil? Are you ready to rise up? So here today in this particular scripture, we're confronted with the story of Gideon. Many of you are familiar with this story, but I want you to take this journey with me today from a little bit of a different perspective. I want you to journey with me from the perspective of the 300. I want you to journey with me on their climb to victory. It's important to understand that your valley experience is in preparation for your mountaintop experience. And in order to get from your valley experience to your mountaintop experience, there are some things on your journey that have got to take place. Verse number two says, and the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying my own hand has saved me. Sometimes God allows us to experience certain situations to prove to us simply that he's God. In order to make sure he gets the glory, he may have to spend some time separating you from people, places, and things that you may give credit to when in all actuality, he is the one who is delivering you. He is the one who's providing for you. He is the one who is healing your body. He is the one who is your strength and weakness. He is the one who has you in the palm of his hands and is carrying you from one moment to the next. So God brings them to this moment where they will know without a shadow of a doubt that it wasn't man who delivered them. It wasn't ourselves that delivered us, but it was only God who delivered them. So what did God do? God begins to dwindle the numbers to what seems like a mathematical absurdity. But wait, God, there are 135,000 of them. There are 32,000 of us. And you're saying that we have too many. For the mathematicians in the room, that's about a four to one ratio. It's four of them to every one of us. And you want me to believe that we've got too many. You know, I like to use illustrations to help understand the story. In the scientific world, we have several of what we call methods of separation. Uh Uh These methods of separations are various techniques to separate one substance from another. Some of them seem quite simple, while others require some work for the separation to occur. Uh In much the same way, in this particular scripture, there are some methods of separation that God utilizes to get the number he desires so that when victory comes, there will be absolutely no doubt that the victory came at the hand of God. 
The first method of separation used reminded me of something that we in the scientific world call handpicking. Handpicking is the simple process of picking out all the unwanted substances by hand and separating them from your more useful ones. When we read verse three of our selected scripture, it says, now therefore, proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remained. I don't want you to miss that. 22,000 people were mentally defeated before the process even started. Reverend Stockton said just a few moments ago that Gideon was afraid, and he was. But the difference between Gideon and the 22,000 that turned was that Gideon was willing to still move forward in spite of his fear. These 22,000 were already mentally defeated and they allowed that mental capacity to dictate their action. If we're going to rise up to be victorious in our walk, we can't let the enemy defeat us in our minds. We can't let the enemy tell us what we can't do. We've got to listen to what God says we can do. Can I say that again? If we're going to rise up and be victorious, we can't let the enemy tell us what we can't do. We've got to listen to what God says we can do. Can I tell you that when God calls on you to rise up, you've got to understand not who you are, but you've got to know whose you are. Those that progress through the first method of separation understood the greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Those who progress through the first method of separation understood that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Those who progress through the first method of separation understood that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power love and a sound mind. Those who progress through the first method of separation understood that the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. Those who progress through the first method of separation understood that I am to be on guard and stand firm in faith, be courageous and strong. Those who progress through the first method of separation understood that some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I trust in the name of the Lord. So the first thing you've got to remember, children of God, is that you can't let the enemy cause you to be mentally defeated. Know the foundation on which you stand, and that foundation is the word of God. The second method of separation came in verses four through seven. It says, but the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them for you. So he brought the people down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink and the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. To be honest, this particular manner of separation was somewhat intriguing to me. What on earth? did the manner in which they drank water 
have anything to do with anything. And as I researched, I learned that this was just a random test to decrease the numbers. Many of us are familiar with the separation technique called filtration. Some of us use it every morning when we get up in the morning to make one of our favorite drinks. Those things that pass through the filter can be used or discarded, and those that remain in the filter can be used or discarded. But the filter is used to separate what you want and what is useful from that that is not. In our scripture reading, those who drank the water in one way were passed through the filter. And those who drank it in another way were preserved and useful. What is so interesting in this selection is that it, is, it was no intentional act that they did to make it into the 300. There was no intentional act that they did to make it into the 300. So what does that mean? That simply means that they were chosen. That's for somebody right there. You can't understand how or why you've gotten to the position you're in, but can I tell you right now, it's simply because you're chosen for that task. God ordained you for such a time as this. You're positioned where you are because God is about to use you to rise up and be part of the solution. Yeah. First Peter chapter two, verse nine says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, yeah. so that you may proclaim the excellence of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So God's chosen children, it's time to rise up. Yeah. The last method of separation was much like a process that we call distillation. Distillation is a process in which boiling points are used to separate substances. That means it requires heat to be separated. I can imagine that as the chosen 300 surrounded the camp of the Midianites, there must have been some fear. Yeah. They were being put to the test in a heated situation. Oh, my Lord. But the difference between the 300 and the original 32,000 is that they didn't let that fear yeah. dictate their action. Yeah. When God chose us as a part of his team of risers, that doesn't mean we won't experience fear and doubt. Yes. What that does mean is that we don't allow that fear and doubt to immobilize us yes. and dictate our every Hallelujah. move. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Can I tell you that if that were the case, I wouldn't be standing where I'm standing right now. <laughs> Can I tell you if that was the case, many of us wouldn't be in the positions we are Amen. right now. Amen. But when God says arise, that means get up and do exactly what God has directed you to do. Because it's not at all about you. It's about the kingdom of God. But what I love about God is that he already knows that we'll have those doubts and fears. And he encourages us along the way. In the verses nine through 15, it says, it happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. Uh -huh. But if you're afraid to go down, in other words, he already knew that there was gonna be some fear. Uh -huh. If you're afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Pura, your servant, and you should hear what they say. I want to put a pen right there, and this isn't even in my notes. They say, usually we say, don't listen to what they say. But sometimes we've got to listen to what they say. Because in this particular instance, Gideon is going down to the camp where the enemy is. And the enemy is saying that there's a dream. And I'll read the verses. And in that particular dream, 
God is revealing to them that the Gideon, the Gideon is about to come with his camp and that they will be delivered into their hands. Sometimes you've got to listen to what the enemy says about you. Because when you're in fear about yourself, it's good to know the perception of what the enemy has of you. And then when you know what the enemy thinks about you and that the enemy has some fear about you, you might just puff your chest out just a little bit and say, don't worry about it, God's got me because you're scared of me. You see what's in me. I may not see what's in myself, but you see what's in me. So sometimes you've got to listen to what they say. And afterward, your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. So basically they said, once you go down and hear what the enemy's got to say about you, you'll be encouraged to do exactly what God already told you you needed to do. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the post of the armed men who were in the camp. Now the Midianites and the Amalekites, all the people of the east, were lying in the valley, valley as numerous as locusts. And their camels were without number. In other words, there was a lot of them. He went down, he could see a large number of them. And when Gideon had come, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I've had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned, and the tent collapsed. Then his companion answered and said, this is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel into his hand. God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshiped. He returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand. So in the midst of Gideon's doubt, how gracious was God that even when he knew he would fear, he provided him with exactly what he needed to stay the course. And staying the course simply meant walking by faith in spite of doubt and fear. I was reading an article the other day that was talking about the skill and technique necessary for tightrope walking. We're all familiar with tightrope walking. We've seen it at a circus or somewhere at some point. And it said that when you walk a tightrope, you must focus intently on a single point. And that is often the anchor. You have to resist looking down at your feet or the obstacle itself because it will keep you off balance and out of sync. I'm going somewhere. So if you want to make it to the other side, the victorious side, you've got to look ahead and maintain focus on the single point or the anchor. What am I trying to say? When you find yourself in a situation where God is telling you to walk by faith and not by sight, don't focus on the obstacle. Don't focus on the illness. Don't focus on the lack. Don't focus on the hurt. But keep your eyes on your anchor. Yeah, I heard what the doctor said, but I still see Jesus. Yeah, my money is tight and it ain't right, but I still see Jesus. Yet I'm experiencing a season of loss and grief, but I still see Jesus. Yeah, I'm confused and depressed, but I still see Jesus. And while I might be walking through this season, I'm keeping my eyes on my anchor and I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus. I'm making it to the other side. As Colossians 3, 2 says, I'm setting my mind on things above, not on earthly things. 
And when I have that mentality, I begin to worship. When I have that mentality, despite what I see, I still raise my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. When I have that mentality, I'm focusing on the end and not where I am. When I have that mentality, I'm making my way to the victorious side because I serve a God who is works with these that is impossible. Though man says it's impossible, he can make it possible. So I worship in the midst and I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We live in a me, myself, and I, and mine society where for so many of us our worth is defined by our successes in the eyes of man. But can I tell you that it's not about who man says you are, it's about who God says you are. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God says you are the head and not the tail. God says you are above and not beneath. God says with man it is impossible, but with me all things are possible. And when I know who I am in God, I fully understand that I have the capability to rise up. How do I know that? Because Jesus was a riser. The grace grave couldn't hold him down. He rose up with all power in his hands. And so I know that I, his baby girl, is a riser too. And so are you, my brothers and sisters, risers? Are you willing to rise up? We can be just like David and challenge the Goliaths of the world, but we've got to realize that God has equipped us to be risers. We can't be mentally defeated by those things that are in front of us. We've got to understand that we are chosen and that we can make it across. We can be just like David and sling the shot against racism. We can be just like David and sling the shot against sexism. We can be just like David and sling the shot against the NRA. We can be just like David and sling the shot against those who say no. We say God, say yes. Are there any risers in the house today? I know that I can rise because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust in the sweetest refrain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And when I stand on Jesus, I can rise when I stand on Jesus, I can make it to the other side. When I stand on Jesus, there is victory on the other side. And we'll rise up. We'll rise like the day. We'll rise up. We'll rise unafraid. And we'll rise up. And we'll do it a thousand times again. So my brothers and sisters, rise up when children are being murdered in classrooms. Rise up when our brothers and sisters are gunned down shopping for their groceries. Rise up when the governor attempts to discredit the black vote. Rise up when housing costs disproportionately affects the black community. Rise up when you face challenges in your health and in your wealth. Rise up to be the children of God that he has called and challenged us to be. And so I wanna leave you with those two words today that I hope throughout this week will linger in your hearts, my brothers and sisters. Rise up, rise up, rise up.
to extend an invitation keep me in the ground to anyone who has not experienced the power of God and strengthening us to rise majority. We need not fear any man. God said, don't worry about the ones who can kill the body. Worry about the ones who can kill the soul. And that's only he. So we're thankful for that word of God. It's now come a time when we can all play part. If you are in need of an envelope for this offering, please raise your hand. The ushers will assist you in that. We got one hand here too. Three. Prepare your best offering. Pay your best offering as Jaquan, Sierra, guide us in the little musical selection. You may give through Cash App. You can go on the church's website, victoryame.org. If you're in the sanctuary, you can give via cash or you can give through Givelify, as I'm about to do. Whatever your means of giving, we appreciate it. God bless you.
thank you, dear God, for these funds that you have allowed to be poured into your kingdom. I pray you bless all who gave, those who desire to give, dear God. Multiply it 10, 20, 100 fold, dear God, that it may be a blessing to them for their gifts. We ask all these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. I'm full. I am very full, and I hope that you are too. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I only have one announcement that's come to me, and that's in reference to the graduates. I hope that you've given your information already to Sister Marlise. If you have not, today is the last day to receive the gifts that we have from the church, because they're making the orders tomorrow. So if you have not given your name or your graduate's name to Sister Marlies, please do so, like, soon. Because we will not feel bad about you not having the gift when we have the celebrations on June 12th because you didn't give your name. Won't feel bad at all. Okay? When Christ comes back, it's not the same thing. When Christ comes back, if you are not ready, Christ will not feel bad. That you went, he going to feel sorry for you, but he's still going to leave. You, me, whoever be left so we're not gonna feel bad if you get left out okay please do your part are there any other announcements anything you'd like to share anything for the good of the people oh we have um shoot thank you there are masks there are ppe i heard you but i heard b and i'm like what do you stand for okay ppe there are masks shields COVID-19 kit, like the test for testing yourself, gloves and sanitizer in the front of the sanctuary if you would like to grab some. Nothing wrong being a little extra cautious, okay? They're available for anybody who would like to grab it. If all hearts and minds are clear, take us out.